I'm here with Don Lepore, CEO and Chairman of the Board of Drugstore.com. Don, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Let's talk a little bit about some of the growth at Drugstore.com. You've had more, you have more than a dozen online retail stores. You've reported record revenue and customer growth. And it seems to be a, a company that is not just successful, but is continuing to grow. How do you identify opportunities for growth? I think you identify opportunities for growth by listening to your customers. And that's what we have continued to do. Um, so it's adding a lot of more, lot more um, selection, so more um, SKUs, as we call it in the business. But the idea of listening to our customers, they'll come on our site and either search for something that we don't have. And if they do, we watch that and we go get those products. We also allow them to tell us what products they'd like us to carry. So that's one way we listen to them. We also listen to the way they want to shop. So we have our drugstore site, and that has everything, a wide, wide range of products. But some customers like to shop in a smaller environment just for specific, specific type products. For instance, some people just want natural products. So we have the natural store. Some people would just want vitamins. We have Vitamin Emporium. So we have a lot of different ways for customers to shop and a lot of different products. You talked a lot about uh, being able to track what people are buying. How important are metrics to, uh, to running the business? Metrics are critical. What's wonderful about running an internet company is we have so much data. So we can see what customers are doing, what they put in their basket first, second, what they put in their basket and then take out, how they uh, maneuver through the site, and it gives us a wonderful insight into how they're shopping and how they want to shop. So metrics are absolutely critical. Do you ever reach a point of data overload in terms of how to <laughs> slice and dice that data? We do, and what you have to be careful is that you don't get enamored with the data for its own sake. You really need to look at it as the voice of your customer. What are they telling you about your business? You know, you mentioned uh, being able to track and grow and find different components to sell, whether it's the smaller stores, niche stores, things yes. like that. How do you do that to expand but yet remain, I guess, true to your core competencies and complement them rather than go outside them? Well, I think what you have to do is think about who you are and what you're good at. And in fact, when I joined the company, that was one of the things that was missing that we had to do. We were kind of trying to be all things to all people. And we took a step back and said, okay, what are we good at? We are the best at health, beauty, and wellness. We're the online leader in health, beauty, and wellness. That's what we do. We're very good at internet marketing, merchandising, fulfillment, customer care. So we looked at those core competencies and said, how can we build on those? How can we grow while staying true to who we are? We help customers lead healthier and more beautiful lives, and that's our mission statement. You talked about fulfillment. You know, most people wouldn't think of a uh, technology or internet company from the standpoint of supply chain. Yes. But yet, with fulfillment and what you're doing, I would guess that supply chain management is very critical to it the company. It is very critical, and it's something I had to learn when I came to the company. Having come from financial services, where there wasn't the same kind of supply chain. So it's been very interesting. And we're very, very proud of the fact that we have, we, from what we see from the external surveys, the highest uh, scores in terms of fulfillment. That's, you ask the customer to rate us once they place the order and they've gotten the package. And they give us very, very, very high marks for our accuracy, for our speed, for the ability to get our packages to our customers. And I would think that ties a lot to customer service Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. How much training do you put into customer service in order to make sure that every experience with drugstore.com is a positive one? We do a lot of training. We hire very, very bright people within our customer care organization. And they really, they shop the site constantly. They really understand the business. They care about customers. And you know we listen to the calls. We do monitoring of the calls. We do all the things that other companies do as well in terms of customer service training, but it's absolutely critical. We also hire people who have a real passion for our business and a passion for our customers. That you can't train in. That you have to hire. Is there a per percentage of, um, of revenue that or of the budget that goes into training for that? Um, there is. That's not something that we share publicly, but definitely we do pay attention to that. You mentioned that you came from the financial services yes, sector I did. from Schwab. And there you were responsible as an early e-commerce leader. You helped launch and build their online business. Talk a little bit about what that experience was for you and how you were able to translate that. It was very interesting. You know, I've, I've always been involved in technology, and I've loved taking technology and applying it to business problems. I don't necessarily fall in love with the technology per se, but it's, its potential in solving business problems. And when the Internet came along, it was so clear that even in, in the early years, we were just scratching the surface of what the internet could do. And in fact, we're seeing now with all the new capabilities how true that was.
but it was so wonderful to be able to give cu consumers or customers access to trading, to their account information, to really empower customers. And that's really what Schwab was all about. So it really fit in very, very well. Those were very exciting times. I mean, we were growing like gangbusters. We were uh, putting new technology in all the time. It was very, very interesting. And so I was able to take that and apply it when I went to drugstore. That is our store. The internet is our store. So um, I, I learned so much at Schwab. It's been great. Excellent. What foundations need to be in place to run online retail stores? You have more than a dozen of them. And obviously, the strategy has to be different than a brick and mortar store. Yes, yes. Um, you know, a, a lot of it for online, it's about marketing. It's about online marketing. It's about having the right products. So we have almost 60,000 SKUs or products. But it's not just any old 60,000. It's about finding the right product. So we have merchants who really go out and comb, uh, comb every, you know, everything in the world to find the best products. And so that's very, very important as well. Interesting. What are some of the challenges you see as the leader for the growth of the company over the next couple of years? Competition is intense, and it's getting more intense. I mean, the fact, what's so wonderful is right now, you can start a company relatively quickly, right? The technology is much more accessible. Mm -hmm. It's much less expensive. You've got, you know, the cloud. You've got a number of companies that you can tap into for fulfillment. So it's easier to start a company. That means that the uh, barriers to entry are lower, and there will be more competition. So we have got to continue to stay relevant and continue to evolve our value proposition. What are you doing in your mind to stay relevant, to stay ahead of that so that you're not obsoleted down the road? Um, we're doing you know, lots and lots of things. One is continuing to evolve our site. One is, as individuals, every single person in the company is looking at how do I maintain my relevancy? How do I get better this year than I was last year and even better next year? How do we do things faster, better, cheaper? What are all the innovations out there in technology that we can bring to bear to serve our customers and delight them? And what you mentioned the cloud a few minutes ago, talking about the uh, things that are out there that are being hosted that aren't necessarily on your own servers. How do you see the future of online sales with regard to that, with cloud, with what's going on, with barriers to entry uh, as the changes are happening? You know, I think. No, you can't differentiate yourself any longer on your kind of technology infrastructure. Those days are gone. So then it's got to be what value add do you put on top of that. In some sense, it's, it's nice because you used to have to spend so much time just putting the plumbing in place that you didn't have time for the more value added things for customers. Now the plumbing can be there fairly easily. So you can really focus on the things that make our customers' lives easier. And that's what it's all about. Great. I think I've got it. That's good. Thank you very much.